Oh, look at that glory there. That is some beautiful coffee. Well, the coffee's flowing and it's time to get going. Hey, welcome back to Questions Over Coffee. My name's Kevin Smith. It's good to see you again. Want a cup of coffee? Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Tom from Reg2685. They write, What about blasphemous thoughts? People who suffer from scrupulosity. Now, this is in regards to uh, the unforgivable sin that Jesus mentioned. Uh, of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Now, let me give you a working definition of scrupulosity. The subtype of obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, involving religious or moral obsessions, scrupulous individuals are overly concerned that something they thought or did might be a sin or other violation of religious or moral doctrine. They may worry about what their thoughts or behavior mean about who they are as a person. This was taken from www.iocdf.org. Reg, this is a really good question. What about those that do not speak blasphemy against the Spirit, that do not speak blasphemy even against someone else? Uh, but they have blasphemous thoughts. Um, scripture does not specifically talk about these things. Um, now, one thing I can point you to is the fact that uh, we are to set our minds on things above, not on things of the earth. And also, Jesus says that out of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, uh, so... If that is the case, that we are uh, thinking blasphemous thoughts, we may need to do a heart check. You know, it may be one of those things that there is an underlying issue for real, not just a, a scrupulous feeling that something may be wrong or, oh no, I may screw this up. One of the things that we can point you to, though, is the fact that any kind of sin is a struggle. Anything that we deal with prior to becoming a Christian, we are more than likely going to deal with after becoming a Christian. And sometimes there are new things that crop up in our lives after we become a Christian that we didn't have to deal with to start with. So, you know, the question is, what do we do about that? Well, let me point you to Romans chapter 7. Romans 7, uh, the second half of the chapter is a really good picture of the struggle that people face, and even uh, the apostles faced. And if they're going to face these issues, and God was using them, then God can still use us when we are dealing with the same issues that we used to deal with and that dealing with the same struggles. But let me point you to a few verses here. Now, like we said, the entire second half of the chapter deals with this uh, struggle. But we are going to deal with chapter 7 of Romans, verses 21 through 25. I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man, but I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin which is in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? 
thanks be to God through Christ Jesus our Lord. So then, on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God, but on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. Now, Paul wants to do what God wants him to do. He wants to do right. He wants to do holy stuff. Just like Christians are seeking to be like our Savior. But the problem is old habits die hard. You know, it's one of those issues that while we are trying to transform our minds and trying to present our bodies as living daily sacrifices, that life gets in the way, our old uh, bad habits, our old lifestyle sometimes creep back up when we're trying to keep them down and get rid of them, and we continue to face the same type of sin. So the question that needs to be asked is, is this a lifestyle where we are really not concerned what God has to say and what God wants us to do and how he wants us to behave? Or is this a struggle? Because if this is a lifestyle, then we've got bigger problems, you know. We need to correct that lifestyle. We need to chuck sin out the door. I mean, in Romans 6, he's already said that at our baptisms, we died to sin. And we were raised to walk in newness of life. So if this is a lifestyle that we're dealing with, we need to take a look at our life and say, why am I still doing this? What is going on? But if this is a struggle and we lose occasionally, well, that's a different story. You know, that's, that's one of those situations where we just realize that we're human again. We realize that we continue to struggle. But like Paul closes this chapter, Thanks be to God, because Jesus is bigger. Jesus is more powerful. Jesus is the source of our redemption and the source of the grace that has been extended to you and to me. Now, the other passage I want to point you to is Hebrews chapter 4, and we're going to consider verses 12 through 16. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus knows. He knows the struggle. He felt the struggle. He dealt with the struggle. But the difference between him and us, he did it perfectly. You know, he didn't sin. You and I give in to sin. It's unfortunate, and we don't want to do that, but we do. We're weak, you know, but... Jesus knows what it's like, even though he did not give in to the, the temptations and lead to sin. So, if we go to him and we seek the throne of grace, and we make sure that our intentions are good, 
holy, pure. We don't have to worry. God is bigger than our issues with sin. His son's blood is more powerful than any struggle that we face with sin. Now, again, is it a lifestyle or is it a struggle? Those two are not the same. You know, so what I would say is will blasphemous thoughts condemn us? Only if we make them a lifestyle. Only if we just flat up do not care what God has to say and who God is. As long as we are seeking to love and serve and become more of what He wants us to be, we're covered. Because He is more powerful. And his grace is far more abundant than our sin. Praise God for that. So I have a question for you. What can we do to help ourselves to change those thoughts that we used to have and make them into what God wants them to be? What steps can we take? What practices can we do? Because we all want to be more of what God wants. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. Thank you for our time together today. I look forward to the next time. Keep pressing forward.